This is Stephen Kotler, and you're listening to Your Superior Self. This is Christina Rasmussen, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, this is Dave Meltzer, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, I'm Anita Morjani, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, this is Paul Selig, and this is Your Superior Self. What's up, everybody? I'm Aubrey Marcus, and this is Your Superior Self. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome back. I'm Trey Downs, and this is Your Superior Self. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to hang out with me today and download this episode. It means a lot to me that you would take time out of your busy schedules to listen to this and uh, itch that scratch that is the curiosity of consciousness and learn more about hypnotherapy. Yes, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about past life regressions and tapping into that subconscious what is that subconscious it's so mystical you want to tap into it right now but you can't because of your waking consciousness but there are tools like hypnotherapy like holotropic breathing breath work things like that that can get you there naturally uh organically and then there's other techniques like we talk about in this episode of uh using um i guess non-traditional therapy modalities like uh, MDMA, um, psilocybin, LSD, um, those types of non-traditional therapy sessions that get you uh, into the super conscious and allows you to connect with the universe and the cosmos and see what humanity uh, needs needs to see, which I am very excited uh, about the research that is being performed at Johns Hopkins cur- currently and the, de- the data that they are putting out that supports all of that <laughs> and some it's very exciting times right now this is i feel like even though it's not a new idea i think um psychedelic therapy is on a resurgence and i think that this time we're more open-minded than when when uh it came out in the 60s and 70s which i'm very excited about but today's guest going back to shiv who is a phenomenal guest a phenomenal guy um he is a IBH certified hypnotherapist. What IBH means is International Board of uh, Hyp- Hypnotherapy. And that automatically um, qualifies him as the top 5% of all the hypnotherapists in the US. Shiv is serving clients in the New Jersey, New York metropolitan area. So if you're up there, search, search for him. He's very passionate about empowerment, healing, transformation, and his clients have seen remarkable results ranging from medical breakthroughs to personal growth and developments. And a lot of you who are not familiar with this type of modality or even comfortable, there are ways that you can tap into your subconscious and hypnotherapy is one of them where you can kind of see and find out for yourselves what it is that has been programmed inside of that from early ages and from past lives and that is another topic we talk about reincarnations past lives how we uh that that state of awareness is never like there's no break in that so you go from one life to the next anyway i'll uh, I'll allow you guys to listen to that that uh clip later on in the in the episode but i am truly excited about this because it is a topic that i love talking about and i could talk about for days but here's a little preview of what's to come you go do this thing with this meditation or lsd or whatever or ayahuasca you have this phenomenal experience you come out of it and you're still broke or your relationships are still damaged or you have no self-esteem or whatever it is and it's not something you can maintain it's not sustainable to keep escaping to this thing only to come back to this reality we were born here, like you said, we were born here for a reason. We chose to came here. What is that? Let's not why not explore that instead of just escaping to it. The same thing with hypnotherapy as well, or past life regressions or any kind of consciousness work. It can very easily become this opportunity to escape your reality because you don't like your reality. Instead, you know, let's go into it with this approach. Okay, I'm gonna go have this experience. 
I'm gonna have all these other resources available to me, whether it's past life memories or high awareness or whatever it might be. And let's create a transformation there so we can actually create a new experience in our life. And what Shiv is talking about there is escapism. It is something that uh, sometimes I find myself getting uh, too involved in trying to get out of the present moment, try to use these different types of uh, techniques like meditation or breath work or whatever to try to escape the, the present because of the, either the pain or the suffering that's going on, um, try to get into a different type of consciousness to experience that because of the, the joy that I find there. And some people... And I find myself doing this as well, trying to get into those states more so than be here because of the, the bliss that we feel. And um, But listening to Ram Das has really helped me uh, see that the now and present is where we, we learn and develop. It is, it is to be here now and be in the moment and experience everything that there, there is to experience all the emotions that are in a certain situation whatever comes up, whatever, wherever you're at in your life, wherever you're at in, in the world, um, be present to whatever situation it may be, good or bad, and honor the emotions that are in your body and to um, kind of sit with it and see how the body reacts and see how the mind thinks and see how your environment changes with each thought and know that you're something higher, that you're something more and more connected to the universe. And that strengthens my faith a lot. Instead of always trying to get out of the moment and go into these diff different types of reality. Yeah, I mean, it's some good stuff. Today is a, a very in-depth conversation um, about these levels of consciousness. But before I get into that, I want to talk about... Uh, something that is near and dear to my heart which is helping children suffering and uh, it is through a term called sacred activism which was coined by the poet Andrew Harvey uh, he's a mystic um, his literature is very fascinating and it's, it's inspired me to you know pursue things that break my heart in this world which is children that are suffering and recognize those nonprofits and organizations that are trying to help and be of service of these types of suffering <clears throat> and today Baltimore Hunger Project is that nonprofit that I want to recognize and they're dedicated to eliminating the growing problem of weekend childhood hunger by feeding bodies and minds they are bridging the gap between Friday and Monday by consistently providing weekend food packages to children identified as food insecure in a compassionate and dignified manner yeah, I mean, they're, they're doing some amazing work. And you'd be surprised how much $25 could do for a child. It can nurse one child for the month. That is so amazing how they are able to just provide these meals to these children and, uh, and nourish them and empower them to become beautiful spirits and beautiful minds. And you can do that, um, you can research more about them by going to BaltimoreHungerProject.org. You can also donate uh, a sum over there. <clears throat> I have done so. And I look forward to working with them more. You can also volunteer some of your time, which is our most precious asset. I don't care how much money you have in the bank, you'll never have what you have right now as far as time. Yeah. So let's get after this. Let's get into why we're here today and that is to talk about uh consciousness and everything that revolves around that so without further ado here is the great and powerful shiv ray hi this is shivam ray and this is your superior self my man thank you so much for joining the show i'm i'm excited about where this conversation goes because i know you're you're uh, into past life regressions, hypnosis, uh, studying the subconscious. Um, thank you for, for joining. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, talking about consciousness is one of my favorite topics. And it goes all different places and directions. And I'm always happy to explore it, even if it's just in a conversation. So mm -hmm. thank you for doing this. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm interested though. Like, how did you get into this? Like, what's your background? Um, so I have a pretty wide and broad background um, before I became a hypnotherapist. I worked in IT as a software developer, software programmer, architect. Um, so programming was sort of in my nature, so to speak. Um, but I remember growing up as a kid, I always had this idea that I want to map out mind itself, like what's in my mind. Like I just want to map it out. I want to explore it and get an idea of it. Um, but that was like when I was nine, 10. Uh, and then like in my mid twenties or so, I came across a hypnotherapist. Um, and that was my first sort of exploration that there is this modality that helps you explore what is in consciousness, which was which just kind of blew my mind because science doesn't have a definition for consciousness. It doesn't have a definition for the mind. It can tell you what the brain is, but it cannot tell you what the mind is. So, um, and then I went to school for it, one of the top schools in the world for hypnotherapy in New Mexico. Uh, um, I loved every single aspect of that training. Um, and I love what I do with my clients. Um, it's very, very, personally fulfilling. Um, it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. So that's kind of how I got into it. Hmm. Study of the mind, right? Like uh, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting, right? So we know what the, the brain is. It's like an organ consciousness mm -hmm. is this thing that's outside of us. And then like when the two combine, that is when, when we get the mind, right? It's like consciousness and the organ, the brain interacting together, we get the mind. That's the self, yeah. I guess the eye. Um, what I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't. I mean, that's such a. It's a very broad topic. It's, yeah, I know. it's hard to even like get traction on it initially. Um, but you know, I think what's really interesting to me is that we as humans are unique from from animals in the sense that we have self awareness. Like we are aware of our awareness, which is what really makes us unique, and which is where the whole consciousness aspect comes in. So. Mm -hmm. Consciousness is all pervasive. I'd like to think that everything is made up of consciousness, including, you know, this desk, this microphone, uh, but it doesn't have self-awareness. So it cannot explore that aspect of itself. And once you have that idea, then it just opens up everything possible in terms of exploration. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, um, <clears throat> you know, I... I you go into quantum physics and you think about the energy that is out there. Everything is energy. Everything is vibration frequency. I mean, we, we are that as well. Yeah. Um, and the higher, you know, and people experience that too, right? Like the higher vibration inside, like the higher frequency, you feel better. You feel, um, you feel like you can connect more with other people and other people are attracted to the energy. Right. Um, I, that's, I mean, it's just, I think we're learning more so um, now with the science and the development of technology and, and, and biology and everything like that. Like we're, we're learning more about what we really are. Right. Like, yeah, I think we're becoming more of um, um, you know, energy beings as opposed to just, you know, a bunch of mechanical stuff, right? Like right. we're studying more, you know, co about consciousness, trying to understand that a little bit more. Um, consciousness is, you know, my belief is that consciousness doesn't derive from the brain. It's outside of us. And mm -hmm. like I said earlier, uh, the brain works with consciousness to create the mind. And I think that um, this, I think we're, we're getting more, um, curious about that. And I think we're, you know, we're learning more about, you know, I think this is going to be like, you know, like, a, you know, how you have the industrial revolution, the agricultural yeah. revolution. I think this is going to be like the, the consciousness revolution in years yeah. to come. Um, but yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not here to talk about my thoughts and theories. We're here to talk about yours. Sure. Um, so past life regressions, like, I mean, so you, you, you get your, your um, certifications, mm -hmm. you start having clients, mm -hmm. um, so do they teach past life regressions where you, when, where you went to school yeah. certified? Yeah. So that's sort of a specialty in itself. Um, and there's a good chunk of the course dedicated to just that. And, and the importance of that is <clears throat> there is no break in consciousness. So while there is a break in our lifetime, like we are born and then we die, um, there is no break in your consciousness itself. So whatever happened to you or whatever you experienced in a previous lifetime, doesn't matter how long ago that was, 
still carries through with you. And there are sort of theories around that concept in various different um, esoterical schools, uh, religions, philosophies that talk about the same concept, that your consciousness is sort of this permanent, uh, all pervasive thing. And whatever you experience in it stays in your mind. So in Buddhism, there's really just the concept of nine levels of consciousness. One of them is dedicated to those sort of specifically for carrying past memories and that kind of stuff. Um, and what's really interesting is we think that time is this permanent thing that everything exists in time. But through the perspective of hypnotherapy, time exists in consciousness, not consciousness in time. So once you're able to do past time regressions, whatever it is that you're experiencing right now can be linked back to something that happened in the past. But had you experienced that experience a little bit differently, the impact of that would have been completely different. It's almost like if you can go back and you can change that really one horrible experience you had in third grade when the teacher yelled at you and you didn't want to do mathematics anymore, right? If you could change that one experience, that then changes your complete experience of life from that point on. So it's really, really powerful what you can do. Um, it's really up to the client how, how motivated they are to make, make that change happen or to allow that change to happen. Um, yeah, I, I kind of, the, the, the more, I guess, I understand like planes of reality or, or states of reality, the more that I understand that time is just a technology, right, yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. um because i'm i'm starting to get a different viewpoint that like you said that consciousness never breaks right like so the now is always now like <clears throat> even when you sleep you're in a different state of consciousness like that is some that is just a different state of consciousness that it, that is some a different reality that you're experiencing yeah. um and the way that i look at it is like you remember the old like um video games where it was like on I don't know, um, like a driving video game where you just move the wheel and it would like the mm -hmm. car itself would just move, but the mm -hmm. the actual road would change in the in a thing, but the car right. never really moved. It was just the 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 illusion that you're moving. Right. <clears throat> I kind of look at it like life with us, right? Like I feel like we're never moving. We're just kind of like mm -hmm. the it's like the world is is yeah. reacting to us, and mm -hmm. like in like we're always this awareness it's just that we experience different states of reality at different times so like when you're when you're experiencing uh, uh beta state right or alpha or theta or delta or whatever um you're not really your your beingness is not really moving anywhere or doing anything it's still here but it's like that state of reality is 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 hitting you differently. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm, I'm like very. I'm like at the very beginning. I'm like at the very beginning of trying yeah. to realize this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and well, I think you're just, spot on. Yeah, you're spot on. Um, I, it's just because like people don't realize that 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 sleep, the dream state, right? Like my wife was just saying that. Um, she was just saying that to me the other night. She was like, you know, I had this dream about you, and you were there, and blah blah blah, and I was like. And that's great. I was like, that's just a different state of reality. And she's like, yeah. she was trying to understand that. I was like, the universe is just giving you, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like death. You're just kind of, when you go to the other side or you go into the spirit world, like you might experience me. I might not be there, but you're experiencing me just through a different reality form. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not going to get into that, but um, <laughs> it's a whole different idea, it's right? Deep topic. Yeah, I know it's, it's deep. Topic. It's deep. Um, yeah how so how long have you been doing this now uh this would now be my fifth year five years fifth year yeah um so is it primarily um the request for near death i mean not near death experiences uh past life regressions um yeah you know a lot of people come in requesting a past life regression um most of them don't know what it will do or what not do uh, most people come in from a place of curiosity. Like, I just want to know what happened in the past life. Um, and I'll typically ask them, you know, what is it that you want to change in your current life? Let's start with that. And then we can go explore a life that's relevant to what you're experiencing now. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you have a past life, you might find that you were a slave in Egypt, right? And well, how is that relevant to now? Like, 
like you said, all there is right now. And a lot of people sometimes tend to use this stuff as escapism. Uh, my job as a therapist is to sort of ground them. Like, how is your life right now? How's your relationships? How's your finance? How's your health? How's your self-esteem? But let's start with that. And then let's see where it goes back. Most of the times it does go back to past life. Um, if not past life, at least interlife, which I find to be even more interesting in some ways it's the time in between two lives. So right before you were incarnated in this lifetime and you had already finished your previous lifetime, that time in between is really sort of crucial because it sets up the blueprint or the script or the major themes of what you may experience in this lifetime. And I find that session or a similar approach to past life sessions to be way more empowering and you know, functional in a way and utilitarian in a way it actually helps people become empowered and make a transformation happen. Um, you know, that's kind of why I got into it was I wanted to really transform some things in my own life. Mm -hmm. And having that power to transform within yourself and having the tools, learning self-hypnosis really opens up a whole bunch of things that you can then start to do in your life. And for most of my clients, it opens up this new toolbox that they never knew existed. And everything that they approach in life now becomes a way to exercise this toolkit, um, this sense of, you know, being able to create your own life, um, you know, and from there it goes to many different places, all different places. What do you mean by create your own life? So if you think about um, all of existence being an expression of consciousness, whether it's your consciousness, God, whatever you want to call it, right? everything is consciousness. And that's kind of what quantum physics is figuring out is that at some level, physical reality just does not exist, but sort of it's projection of something. We like to think it's consciousness. So if everything is a projection of consciousness, if you can make a small tweak at this very baseline level of what is creating this reality, this projection of reality, if you can make a change there, then you have unlimited access to create anything. So kind of like the video game you were talking about, somebody created that video game. There's a script that then projects that imagery and sound and effects onto your screen. If you were the programmer, you could write that game to do anything and you know, perform in any way you like. So in that sense, so you know, somebody might come to me for weight loss or trauma. And what they really learn is how to tweak their own consciousness, how to change it, alter it, modify it to then create the reality and recreate the experience that they want to create. It's never about just the weight or just the job. It's really about how do you want to tweak? If you could create your own consciousness in any way you like, you can then create your life and your reality in any way you like. Hmm. I don't know if that answers you. It's a very long-winded. No, no, I like that. I mean, I just trying to break it down so that other people can understand it. So like, in what ways have you created your reality, right? Like, is this exactly where you envision yourself to be or want to be? Um, you know, if you'd asked me that question a year ago, I'd be like, you know, I'm still not there. But now I feel like I'm very much there. Um, one of the, you know, one of the many ways is just this ability to do what I'm really passionate about, right? So hypnotherapy is one line of work. The other is still software development. I also own a wellness center. And I'm getting into writing. So these are, you know, a few years ago, these things would have been completely impossible for me because I was very shy, timid, had no confidence, you know, but chipping away at those things is really being able to create myself to be the kind of person I want to be. So if you say, hey, you know, I want to be an athlete, I'm going to ask you in your mind, what is that athlete like? What is, how would you describe that person in terms of their own personality and how they view the world? And when you become more of that person, you can then become the athlete or the actor, or whatever it is. So for me, it's, you know, it's been with just my own sense of self-esteem, confidence, um, being at peace, being at ease, um, having financial freedom, being able to travel the world, do and be anything I want to be, constantly learning, constantly reevaluating who I am, and having this other lens on myself. Um, that I'm not just a fixed person. I can change anything about myself to create the experience that I want to create. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I would say with relationships, that's been a major shift for myself. Uh, loved 
ones, friends, girlfriends, um, work for sure. And just overall presence, right? Just being here now in this moment, talking to this guy called Trevor, um, just getting into it, having a really good conversation. This would not have been possible for me a few years ago. So this is a completely different reality in that sense. Um, no, I, um, you know, the more that I expand my awareness, the more that I expand that my knowledge and the more that I pursue spirituality, the more that I pursue what we think is the truth, um, the more that I realize, you know, the ego, right? Like the, the awareness of the ego and what we think we are we, are we we think we are the ego right and i think you see a lot of what you know a lot of the turmoil that you see right now in the world is because of that we think that we are these things and we make attachments to things mm-hmm. you know, we, we make attachments to success we make attachments to certain things external things outside of ourselves yeah and that's what calls suffering right that's what yeah. you know buddha said you know the four what is it four noble truths Truth, one, yeah. one of them was uh, there is suffering and two is because of the attachments right. um, that we have in this world. And I'm learning, you know, to be here now. And that's the, what you said earlier, which is huge because I wasn't always here now. I was always in the future planning and I was always criticizing my past. And mm. um, that's the one thing about past life regressions that kind of scares me a little bit because I don't want to be attached to my past lives. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I want to learn. I, I want to one. I would love to. I'm curious about them. I'm curious about where I've where I've come from as a consciousness, like what the experiences are and like what it is that I'm trying to heal here. But I don't want to be attached to that to where I forget about the importance of this life. Do you find, right. do you find that a lot of your clients are too attached to the past lives? Yeah. You know, and that's kind of when you ask, how do people approach past life? A lot of them come in thinking that, you know, there's gotta be something in my past life that happened to me. I did that I'm being punished for now. Right. So people come up with this idea of karma is linked to past life. Um, but depending on who they're doing the regression with, the right kind of therapist would be able to guide them into a session where they end up gaining a transformation and not justification for who and what they are now. A lot of times when people look at, you know, the the causation of what happened and what's happening now, for a lot of people, it's like, oh, now I know I was hung in such a lifetime. That's why I I don't wear scarves in the wintertime, right? So that just becomes causation. That just becomes more reinforcement to continue down that path of whatever it might be. The right kind of approach would be, hey, let's come up with a goal first. What do you want to transform in this life? Let's start with that so that we make sure when we have that context of what happened, we're looking at it through the lens of let's transform that experience so we can change, create a different experience now. Mm. And that's sort of a, a, a very there's a very fine line between victimhood and empowerment. Right? So you can do really amazing tools and meditation and that kind of stuff. But if your core perception is that of victimhood and you're not in touch with that, we are creators of our own experience, then it's very easy to lose sight of that. But if you go into anything with this idea that, you know what, I'm gonna take full responsibility for who I am now. And at the end of the day, no matter what has happened to me or, or what's happening or what's going to happen, I am the creator of my own life. When you go in with that approach, you're able to have a much more transformative experience and not just something that just reinforces or snowballs into more of what's already happening. Does that make sense? No, it's 100%. I couldn't agree more. I think that's well said. Um, a lot of people don't want to take accountability for their lives like every 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 choice or every decision that you've made up to this point is you know, like right where you stand now is the result of, of those choices of those decisions yeah. yeah and it's it's either going to free you or make you a prisoner because you're either going to be a victim like you said um and i'm more uh, like a 
I don't know. I, I've been reading a lot of Ram Dass. A lot mm-hmm. of Ram Dass. He just came out with a new, or they just came out with a new book. I shouldn't say he, he passed away. Yeah. Um, and he, he said something that just really struck home with me. It wasn't about achieving enlightenment. It was about becoming free. Um, free of this this human beingness, right? Like these emotions. Yeah. Because like, even though he was like one of the early entrepreneurs of LSD and, and early, um, however you want to say it, like early establishers of like that, that research, yeah. uh-huh. he, he, he would say it wouldn't last forever, right? Like he would get, he would use right. LSD as a key to open in the mind and, and, and experiencing right. different states of consciousness and experiencing yeah. the, those God states and, and experiencing those, those, you know, the, 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 the witnessing of the ego, um, all of that great stuff that we, we, we feel like enlightenment is, Mm -hmm. but they would never last. It it was always a high. And then it was a down. Yeah. He he can never achieve that. And he was like, you know, uh, why go after something that's going to be short lived, right? Like why not try to mold yourself into something that you experience it every day and, in order to do that, which you, you never, no one's perfect, right? Like no one's ever going to achieve that Nirvana every day. Yeah. Just because this is the human experience. This is, you know, this is, this is the school, you know, but you got to take, like he says, you have to take the curriculum. Like why not take the curriculum of life and, and experience that and move on. And so like, I'm learning more how to be in the moment. And like he says, you know, be in hell with an open heart and just have the experience of the moment and be in it, but know that you're not this, this body, this, you know, this experience is happening for you. You know, like you think that you are because your attachment to it, you think you are, you know, I think that I am this person, Trey, I think I am this, this person because um, of my attachment to that throughout my entire life. And, you know, Totally. And once you, once you get rid of those attachments, you start you start seeing the true self. You start seeing you get you get to see the witness. Yeah. And um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? No, that's really interesting. So I touched upon a little bit briefly on this idea of escapism, and unfortunately. I think a lot of new age tools, modalities, practices have become a way and means of escapism, right? So you go do this thing with this meditation or LSD or whatever, or ayahuasca, you have this phenomenal experience, you come out of it and you're still broke or your relationships are still damaged or you have no self-esteem or whatever it is. And it's not something you can maintain. It's not sustainable to keep escaping to this thing only to come back to this reality, right? But we were born here. Like you said, we were born here for a reason. We chose to came here. What is that? Let's not, why not explore that instead of just escaping to it? The same thing with hypnotherapy as well. Our past life regressions or any kind of consciousness work, it can very easily become this opportunity to escape your reality because you don't like your reality. Instead, you know, let's go into it with this approach. Okay, I'm gonna go have this experience. I'm gonna have all these other resources available to me, whether it's past life memories or high awareness or whatever it might be. And let's create a transformation there so we can actually create a new experience in our life now. And that, it's a very fine line. It's very easy to go into it with, with escapism or you know, come back to it with reality. Um, but, you know, like you said, we came here to experience all of life and not to invalidate any of it, right? So um, I forgot what the example was that you gave, but, you know, whether you're angry, right? So even angry or being in a place of hell, it's not something that you need to necessarily invalidate. But if you're being angry, if you have the slightest inclination of having some self-awareness in that moment, Instantly, you're expansive, completely expansive. You're bigger than just that one emotion. And you're aware of yourself having this awareness and having this experience of this anger. And now it's a totally different sort of approach. Then it feels like you're a character in a movie or you know, something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. The the movie, right? Like 
I, I, some people like say, oh, I, I immediately give it to God. Like as soon as I feel like, mm -hmm. like to me, that's just a, a, a uh, an example of escapism, right? Like you're just yeah. pushing it away. Like you don't want to sure. feel it. Uh, I feel like you should, I should, I think you should feel it. I think you should yeah. acknowledge it and honor it. Right. I don't think you need to suffer in it. I think that yeah. once you feel it and acknowledge it, then you become the witness and say, all right, this is, the reason why you're feeling this is because the attachment to whatever situation, whatever's yeah. happening has triggered you. What is that? What is the attachment? And then that's where you can work on it, right? Like say, all right, I'm, I'm angry because of, uh, for whatever reason, someone said something to me that was, that made me upset, but I, what made me upset was the attachment to what they said. Like, mm -hmm. what was it that they said? And that's how you kind of, you know, you troubleshoot your way through that and see where your attachments are. And then yeah. you try to change your attitude towards that, or you try to change or get rid of that attachment. Right. Um, right. Right. And, you know, like talking about anger, just pure, authentic anger only lasts about 15 seconds. Anything additional to that 15 to 30 seconds, anything additional to that is just your own ego or your own false beliefs. So if somebody says something to me, if I don't believe that to be true in some way, it's not going to trigger me. So if I was to say, hey, Trey, your red shirt looks horrible. You're not wearing a red shirt, so it has no traction with you. But it's only when you believe some false things to be true by yourself, then your ego gets triggered. Mm -hmm. um, but the more you try to suppress it, the more you try to fight it, the stronger that belief then becomes. And in that sense, we end up just becoming, you know, enslaved to our own lack of awareness. And that's the, that starts the whole pattern of karma. Because once you get in train, okay, every time I have this emotion, I'm to push back or suppress it or invalidate it. You're just keeping it suppressed within yourself, this idea, this false belief that you might have that triggered you in the first place. Um, you know, I think that connects to the idea of self-love also. So self-love is not just, you know, being lovey-dovey and always being positive. It's about being authentic. It's about being 100% real with who you are, with every aspect of yourself. That's self-love. It's self-acceptance of who you are as you are. And more often than not, you realize a lot of the things that you don't like about yourself are not even true. But because you suppress them, in a way, they become true because you carry so much resistance for it or against it. So, you know, it kind of, again, goes back to we create our own reality 100%, whether it's through meditation work or hypnotherapy or just how we behave and conduct ourselves in daily life. Unfortunately, a lot of this awareness is just not taught in our society these days. So people are just left to their own means to just figure out, you know, it's just like a wild, wild west. Just do whatever you want and just figure out, see what sticks. Yeah, I I, I agree. There's not enough. Um, well, I think it's better, right? Like, I mean, back in the day, nobody really, you know, <clears throat> they never really thought of meditation, right? Like, they're just right. like, oh, we're not doing meditation. You know, we don't do that, yeah. you know? That's weird. Yeah. Um, now people are starting to meditate. Yoga was a big thing. Like nobody really sure. did yoga back in the day. It was kind of like looked on as what are you doing? Now you see yoga studios everywhere, yeah. um, which is great. You know, it's a, that practicing that mindfulness, that that centeredness. And uh, I haven't got into it yet, but I, I, I'm i trying to trying to do it. Um, now, when you're doing the I, I mean, I'm assuming you've done some past life regressions for yourself, right? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, when you're in, when you're in this deep state, I guess it's like, is it between alpha and theta? Is that where you're at in, in, in the um, consciousness? It's it's close to that. It actually can go even lower than that. Uh, science doesn't have a term for it. They just call it ultra low. And what happens in that state is the very deep state, your brain activity also looks very similar to very high levels of state. So, so from the science perspective, it's very confusing because those two waves shouldn't be connecting in a circle. Um, but yeah, I mean, brain waves go even lower than what science is able to measure. Um, but so you're able to... Well, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but like when you're, when you're in that state and you're doing your past life regression, like even though your eyes are closed, right? Like you're seeing, is it, how, do, how are you seeing it? Are you visualizing? Are you there? Like, is it clear yeah. as I have my eyes open right now and I can see the room? Is it as clear as that? Um, it can be for some people. So some people are just naturally way more visual. Um, so they'll have more vivid colors and visual aspects to it. Um, it really varies quite a bit. 
Um, some people will have more of an awareness of what's happening, and less visual. Some people will have more sound or other feelings. Um, it really varies quite a bit. We don't necessarily try to direct or force people to have a certain quality or certain vividness to what they're experiencing. Um, like ayahuasca, for example, is extremely vivid. Um, it's, very, it's a very sort of an uncontrolled environment. Hypnosis is less vivid, but it's more sort of targeted at getting to the root cause of what's causing whatever it is you're trying to solve. And so uh, you have, you know, you have full awareness so you can talk. You typically talk and be a therapist and the therapist is guiding you through the experience. It's almost like being in two different places at the same time. So if you ever like daydreamed and somebody keeps calling your name and they're there in the background, that's what my, my voice might sound like to the client. Is this voice in the background, they're aware of it, they're aware of where they are and what's happening. But most of the awareness is in that past life. Mm. That's awesome. Um, who were you in your, your most recent past life? Um, honestly, I'm not sure which one is the most recent. Uh, depending on when you do it, different sort of themes might come up. Um, but the one that seems to be most prevalent is not on this planet. Um, but the, again, the theme in that lifetime was also this exploration of consciousness itself and the idea of empowering people and turning people on to their own awareness. So it's almost like, um, it's almost like if you have this person who's asleep, but they don't know they're asleep and you wake them up, kind of an approach. And that's kind of seems to be a theme. So none of the lifetime very close to this one. I was a teacher of sorts of metaphysical um, modalities, if you want to call it that, um, mm -hmm. self-healing. Um, and then also a few lifetimes connect to the idea of um, the architecture of, of existence itself. Like what is the structure and the architecture of this universe? Um, so those are some of the themes. Most of them were not on this planet. Um, they were typically just weird looking places, weird looking beings around me. Most of them, I could only interpret them as sort of this energy beings, uh, didn't really translate well into my physical brain. Uh, so there's some disconnection there. There's some limitation on what, you know, how you're able to interpret stuff. But again, the goal was to um, uncover some major themes and causations that started in previous lifetimes and see how they connect to my lifetime. So your feeling is that you were a being that was not on this planet, right? Like on this, on, on earth, but you were in this type of theme where you were helping others become more aware. Correct. That's pretty yeah. fascinating. And people were like, what the hell are you talking about? But yeah. um, have you ever read Robert, Robert Monroe, Bob Monroe? I don't think I have. No, because he, I would be very, have you ever tried binaural, binaural beats like yeah, yeah. Hemisync? Has that helped you get into different states of consciousness? Um, earlier on, it used to. Um, mm. Now I find it's more of an um, impedance, if you will. Well, M Mr. Monroe, who passed away a long time ago, he is the, he is one of the um, early explorers in like Hemisync, right? Like he, mm -hmm. his, his books he has a trilogy of books and they talk about that, right? Mm. Using Hemisync to get in different states of consciousness and explore like the, I guess the astral plane yeah, and go to different, you know, see, see the behind the scenes, right? Like they, I mean, he talked about going like seeing like the belief systems that we have, right? Like when people die and pass away, they, they feel like they're in heaven or whatever. Like they feel in and being able to go and see that, but then go beyond that. And like see different levels of the, the universe and see like different things. And I mean, it's fascinating. Like, I, so he talks exactly about what you're talking about. There's different parts of the universe and there's different, you know, beings that come and, and then, you know, some of us just stop in for this earth curriculum. Right. And, and try yeah. to, and try to, uh, you know, take a class, you know, a couple of lives here and there and then learn about where we're at. And some people kind of, yeah cringe at that right because it messes with their belief systems right they're like right. Oh, it's not right like, there's, there is a heaven up there and then this is where i'm gonna go when i die or i'm gonna go to hell if i'm bad and it's like yeah 
we, I mean, I don't know. I've never experienced any of this. Like I, I try to keep an open mind and I try, you know, I don't have any wisdom because I don't mm-hmm. have the experience. Like I have, and I have like this, I had, I had belief systems and I wanted, and you know, some of that made me question, right. Some of the reality that I have. And so I, um, try to gain more knowledge and it's led me like breadcrumbs along this journey, but I want the wisdom. I want the, I don't want to go from belief. I want to go from belief to right. you know, knowing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And totally. so like, I've, I've been, I've been dabbling in yeah. uh, binaural beats and like, I've, I've had one vision where like, I, I, it was crazy, man. Like um, Tom, Thomas Campbell, you should definitely read his book. He has a big um, trilogy as well called my big toe it's like my big theory theory of everything but he has these binaural beats you can buy them for like 20 bucks on a site and like they're like the lamborghini of like binaural Mm. beats and like i was like i was listening to it and all of a sudden like my eyes closed and i'm just sitting there listening and i'm start. i could feel myself going i could feel my you know i can hear the the sounds and i can hear my both hemispheres start to kind of sync Mm -hmm. up and then like I envisioned like in a bus or something passing and seeing things like vividly, like just seeing things. I'm like, holy crap, man. Yeah. Um, but I'm on that, like I'm going down that path. I am going down that path. And, um, you know, I think near my past life regressions is something that I definitely want to experience. Um, what, what should people do if they're kind of like, they want to, I don't know, where should they, I mean, one, they should go to your website, right? Like and find out more sure. about you, but sure. uh, what should they do first before getting a past life regressionist? Yeah. Um, I think, like I said, finding the right therapist is probably the most important part of it. Uh, there's a bunch of people who call themselves past life regression therapists, but or they've done like a YouTube course or something, <laughs> they've actually done it themselves. And that's a disaster. Uh, typically just doesn't turn out good. Um, find a therapist and you know, just ask them, where did you learn this modality? What's your training and background like? And what's your approach? And if the approach doesn't include something along the lines of, hey, let's create some transformation, some real value, then run away from that therapist. If they're like, hey, this is really entertaining, it's fun. Sorry, go to a therapist who wants to create value, but run away from the one who just says, hey, this is great, it's entertaining, that kind of stuff. That stuff typically does more damage than good. And you have no idea whether what you saw was even real or not. You might think it's just your imagination, but it's not grounded to anything you're kind of like. Um, and secondly, you know, figure out what it is. If you could change anything in your life right now, if I could give you a magic wand, if you could wave it and just change something in your life where would you start? What would you want to do? Start with that goal, present that goal to your therapist and let them sort of structure and create what's a good map or pathway that leads you into past life and helps you resolve the issue. Um, Because a lot of the stuff, it can be like sort of a rabbit hole. You go in, you find some bad stuff and it does more damage and you have more crap to deal with. And that's just not the way to do it. Um, well, what do you say to those patients or clients that, um, they think that they're imagining, like when they sit when they, when they, when they see themselves doing past life and you're like, yeah. am I making, am I making this up? What, 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 yeah. what is that about? So, you know, I'll typically, I won't do a past life regression in the first session. I'll do some other, other hypnotherapy sessions. So they get a sense of what it's like to be in that state. Um, so it doesn't feel completely absurd or weird to them. And that's one of the ways that they know from the quality of their awareness what it is that they're experiencing. Second is, uh, typically when it starts out, the scene, sort of, if you can call it that, or the film, if you can call it that, when it starts out, it seems, it might feel like your imagination. But then as you go along with what's happening, it sort of draws you into the experience. And then you start to draw connections into your current life. You start to see a current life from a totally different perspective. And that's why being grounded in this where you are right now is very important while you're in the session too. Otherwise, it could just be a very entertaining movie that you just watched that has no correlation. But as you go deeper and deeper into it, you start to figure things out in your life and transformation starts to happen right there. So you might figure out, you know, and this is often the thing that happens is 
um, people that you're in conflict with in this current life, you're connected to them in a past life. And as you're seeing this scene play out, they'll be like, you know what? This person who appears to be my father in this past life is actually my boss in this lifetime. And they can see the connection, they can see the themes and they can see why there's so much friction or whatever's happening in this lifetime based on what's happening in the last lifetime. And that's really the most real aspect is the transformation and change that comes from it. Um, other than that, you could say, hey, it's just the imagination. That's okay, too. Uh, for me, it's the real part is the real change and real transformation. Wow. <clears throat> have you had any um, clients that have been like famous people in the past, past lives? Um, I've had a couple who have connected to either various different kings or queens. Mm. But I've also had multiple people think that they were the same person in a previous lifetime. Um, so, it's, you know, people often think that they were Cleopatra, for example, or Julius Caesar. And there's an explanation to that. So if you think about your soul and your spirit has a higher aspect to it, and that higher aspect has another higher aspect to it as well. It's almost like a pyramid. If you go up high enough, we all sort of connect to the one same source. So you might be connecting to your higher self's, higher self's, higher self, who had an experience as Cleopatra or whatever. And that's when people often have memory of the same, being the same person. So I've had a couple of kings, queens, um, some monks from, from Tibet, from India. I'm from India originally. So I just tend to attract a lot of people who have the past lives connected to that lifetime or in that setting. Um, a lot of people who were doing so sort of similar explorations in terms of self-development and healing, exploring of consciousness. Um, yeah, but you know, I think what made it unique for them was how it connects to their lifetime now. Um, the, the famous aspect didn't really come up so much. It wasn't really that prevalent in their regressions. You said something very interesting. You said like, so they connect with the higher self, the higher self, the higher self, and it eventually all becomes one anyway. Yeah. So I guess I go, I mean, it doesn't go against anything, but it's like, it, it leads me to question like, so we, we're all connected in, in one, in, in that manner, right? Yeah. Like we're all connected. Like, but is there, is there that, I guess I guess I'm afraid of the losing that individuality, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that feeling that that mm -hmm. just getting washed into the void. Yeah, that's what I mean, right? Like so if we're all connected and we're all that higher consciousness, yeah. then what about the trainness? Like does what how does that feel? Or, or or when I go up and I connect with the higher self, the higher consciousness, is it just like this feeling here? You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, there's a guy by the name of Daryl Anka. He is somewhere in the U.S. He's a channel, and he channels this, this entity called Bashar. And he does a really good explanation of sort of the structure of what is and how things are. And I really like their, their explanation, which is something like, um, imagine if all of existence, all of the universe is just one thing, one particle or one dot or whatever it is. And there's nothing else. Even time doesn't even exist. But to experience itself, it must sort of divide itself up so it can have something to reference itself against or compare itself for against. Without that division, you cannot have self-awareness. It's just one thing. How does it even know that it exists if it doesn't have something? So the idea is that there is just this one thing and that divided into two to have this point of reference. The two divided into more to have this infinite sense of self-reflection. Um, and there's this concept in Hinduism called Indra's web, which is imagine if you have this massive web and you have crystals in it, every crystal reflects every other crystal, but it's sort of like a holographic representation of all of this. So we are here to experience ourselves as an aspect of ourselves. So you and I, at some level, exactly the same thing. 
what I'm experiencing you and you're experiencing me. So we can have this point of reference. We can have this experience of duality and trinity and so on and so forth. Sense of division and separation. So people often tend to um, put down the sense of division or separation. That's only a problem if you really believe that's true or you forget that there is this oneness. But separation and division allows you to have the sense of individuality that you can experience as true lack of position, which can be a very empowering and beautiful experience and lead to people having compassion for the other person. Because you, at some level, you realize you're just one single person. So, Who was that channeler? Daryl Anka. How do you spell his last name? A-N-K-A. -A. Daryl Anka. Definitely getting, guy. definitely checking him out. Um, yeah. yeah. That's such a beautiful, like a nap. That's like such a, a graceful way to explain that. Right. I hope yeah. I didn't butcher it. It's, no, it's, no, it's no. Way no, more clear no, in my no. mind. But, <laughs> um, but, you know, we were talking about time and existence. And I just want to bring in this other aspect of how Bashar explains what it is. And the way he, ex he explains it is that, um, and you mentioned something about now being the only time and presence there is. And the way he explains it is, imagine all of existence is sort of on a film strip. So past, present, future, everything exists on this film strip. You just happen to be moving through one frame of that film strip at a time. And because there is only one thing, one particle, one dot, whatever you want to call it, that exists outside of time, it can sort of divide itself up into infinite different expressions and create these different permutations of reality. So you and I are made of the same exact particle, but it's sort of divided up into different orientations across different film strips, but it all exists right now. And that's a structure of the universe. And when you're in different states of consciousness, you can freely traverse these different frames of consciousness, jump one film strip to another, and explore all of it at once, or one by a time, any way you like. <laughs> you have a lot of knowledge, man. A lot of wisdom coming out of you. I love this stuff, so you know, it's kind of what I do. I know, right? Um, how can people become past life regressionists or past life? You know what I mean? Like, how can yeah. like if I wanted to pursue that, how do how would I go about that? So there's a couple of really good schools around the world. I think the best ones are here in the US. Uh, the one that I mentioned to you in New Mexico, um, I think it's one of the best schools. It's been around for 30 years. Um, yeah, what, what's was the, what was the name of it? Hypnotherapy Academy of America. It's in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I would say if you're serious about it, you know, do, your, do yourself the favor and get the best education and training that you can. Because it's most empowering, even if you don't want to be a professional hypnotherapist, it's the best investment. It's the best ten thousand dollars I ever spent in my whole life, ever, because um, it because it just shifts you completely, and you have so much power within yourself that you're kind of awakened to. Um, so yeah, go to good school, dive into it. Um, don't hold back in the ed education. That's awesome, man. Um, and then, I guess getting certified now, you can now you can have clients and help them, right? Yeah. Yeah medical yeah. or past life yeah and then um how was your business going like how was your practice really good um i'm pretty bugged for the most part um and it allows me to then work with clients that i think i can help best if i don't think i can help them out and refer them out to a colleague or whatever um but for me it's i take on clients who really want to do a deep dive because that's kind of where i just go naturally um, you know, somebody just wants to lose 10 pounds, no, that's fine, it's a great goal to have, but I'd probably refer them out to somebody else. I work with client people who want to do a deeper dive into their life. Well, have you, ever, have you ever gotten to that deep dive and said, oh shit, I've gone too far, I don't know, I don't know how to handle this problem? Um, I have not, and I'll tell you why. Um, when, I'm, when any good hypnotherapist is doing a session, most likely they're in a trance themselves. And when you're in a state of trance, 
you're not blocked by this ego mind or this doubt or fear mind. You always know what you need to know when you need to know it. Mm. And that's from the quality of being in trance. And the way I know that I'm really sort of entrained with the client is that I'll be seeing what they're about to describe a few seconds before they can say it, before the words can come out. And that's how I know my mind is really locked in with their mind. And at that point, it's just a free flowing um, session. That's awesome, man. Uh, I could talk to you all night. Um, Likewise, yeah. Uh, Time must fly talking about this stuff. Right. We're getting flow, We're getting flow states. Um, totally. How can people find you? How can people connect with you? Sure. Uh, check out my website, prana essence hypnotherapy.com. Um, yeah, I'm on, on Facebook, Instagram, my website. Just hit me up. I'm pretty available to talk at least. And uh, yeah. what's your what's your Instagram handle for them? Uh, self mastery, hypnotherapy, and self mastery. Um, or you can just type in Shivam, comes right up on Instagram. That's awesome. What do you What do you want your legacy to be? Mm, man, it's a deep question. <laughs> yeah, out of the hour. Um, I think I want to. I want others to feel the same sense of creatorhood that I've had the opportunity to experience in this lifetime. If there's one person who I can share that with, that would be a great legacy for me. I'd be very sad, so I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, people just, you know, awakening one person at a time to this ability of creating your life exactly the way you want it to be. I think that's the greatest gift anybody can leave behind. Wow, man, it's powerful. Um, Shiva, I want to say thank you <clears throat> for coming on the show. This has been fantastic. This has been, uh, this has definitely surpassed my expectation. Um, I just want to say thank you. And I, I really appreciate you. Thank you. I really enjoy this conversation. Um, yeah, I'll welcome it anytime again. So thank you very much. Thanks for allowing me.